Well, greetings, magnificent beings. Welcome to episode 25 of Soul Empowerment with myself, David McLeod, Christy Borst, and Sarah Jane. We are here to talk today about a fabulous topic called Your Wonderful Life. And um, I remember when we were talking about the, about the topic, we were just kind of hashing out ideas about what we wanted and stuff. I... I think I, I mentioned something about watching the movie uh, It's a Wonderful Life by Frank Capra with, you know, Jimmy Stewart and those other people and how, how moved I am by that movie. Every time I watch it, it just is a reminder to me that all of us have an impact in the world. I have an impact in the world, even if I don't necessarily see that impact. You know, it's not always being fed back to me in, in the way that I might like. And, um, and the idea of the movie, of course, is that just imagine if you had never been born. Let's just create that scenario and get you get to watch life unfold without you in the mix and see what happens. And that's the beauty of the story when, when George gets to see just how, much, how important he has been in the lives of so many people, even though he wasn't really, you know, he's not an egotistical man or anything like that. He wasn't looking for accolades, but he did have that touch. And so that's where we're coming from today on this idea of your wonderful life. Christy, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Uh, oh, I should just mention, so people understand what's going on here. Um, we decided, Nancy and I decided that we wanted to expand this panel and have at least, you know, have four people on the panel on a regular basis. Now, obviously, she's not here today, but that's, that's okay. Sometimes it'll be two, three, four, whoever. But that's the plan going forward is to have four of us on this panel. And so I'm really delighted that both Christy and Sarah have been able to join our team because they they, they helped out back in the summer and, and did a great job. And so I just really enjoyed their presence. So Christy, please go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you expect to get out of this program. Hi, everyone. My name is Christy Borst, and I'm joining you from southern Maine, where I live. And uh here I do um, quantum healing energy sessions. Um, that's my passion and my, my ministry, if you will, helping others to heal through space and time. Um, I think we're in this kind of rare opportunity right now we, where we are aware to do the work, not only for ourselves, but for uh, the people that came before us and those that come after. Um, I think for me, what I what I would like to get out of this, or what I what I feel passionate about on this topic, is just that so many of us enter the new year feeling badly about ourselves, or you know, focusing a lot on what we want to change. Whereas I feel that we can uplift ourselves and so many other people by having a positive vibe. And that comes from really gratitude and celebrating what's going right. Beautiful. Thank you. And Sarah, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us where you are and what you do and what you bring to this program today. I'm Sarah J. You can call me Sarah, though. Um, <laughs> um, I'm in the UK. I'm right on the south coast in a little place called Bournemouth, not far from Southampton for those people who don't know the UK, may know Southampton because it's where the Titanic sailed from. Um, so <laughs> um, and I'm a complimentary therapist, Reiki master teacher, vocal Reiki creator, founder of Gift of Healing TV, and I just love supporting people in any way that I can. But it's about supporting people to help themselves for me. I'm not here to do anything for anyone because the truth of the matter is we can't. We're here to support. That's that's my feeling. As many a lot of people would say, oh you're a healer. The only person I've ever been able to heal is me. Um, and I hope I've done a pretty good job of that. Um, my own story, I have no doubt, in these programs, bits and pieces will slip out. <laughs> because I believe we're all here to share from our experiences to support you. 
And so this is why when David invited me, it's, I love doing these shares. You know, whatever the topic, if I feel I can add to it, and they're going to be topics that will put me outside my comfort zone. And actually, as uncomfortable as that is, it's great. Because it's not only helping empower other people, but it empowers me too. So I hope that when you listen to these, whether you agree with any of us, all of us, none of us, it doesn't matter. We are sharing from our perspective, from the experiences we've had, the things we've gone through in our lives. Um, and that for me is what this is about. You know, new year, new day, new hour, new minute. We can change our lives with a new thought and a new way of thinking. And it is a new way of thinking to me. And so, yeah, I'm going to shut up now. But that's why, that's oh, why no. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, David. No, that's great. Thank you, Sarah. That, I really like what you were saying about the new thought and a new way of being, a new way of thinking, a new way of showing up. I think that's really important. Um, and Christy, you mentioned the idea of how many of us come into a new year perhaps berating ourselves or beating ourselves up for not having done all the things we thought we should have done or whatever. And therefore, we come in with a bunch of resolutions. You know, we make up this list of things. Well, next year is going to be different. Next year is going to be better. Next year is going to be this and so on and so on and so on. And we just decided that we want to maybe shift that thinking a little bit. And instead of having a negative perspective on what happened in the past, let's look at where we are right now. And from the perspective of Jimmy Stewart and that movie, just imagine all of the people we have touched, all of the things, all the amazing things we have done in the course of a year. And let's just honor that and bless it before we start thinking about how much we want to change something. I think too that, you know, we all have this similar perspective or awareness that really when you're aware of your power and when you're aware of your um, choices, really any day is your New Year's Day. It's not, it doesn't have to be January 1st. Um, getting back to you know the the comments that sarah just made and an interesting thing that's kind of happening on facebook right now i don't know if you you've noticed this but people are posting pictures from 10 years ago and then now and you know 10 years ago i almost feel like i was a totally different person i was i'm not um, I'm, I'm just, um, so much freer and happier and healthier and really almost debunking the adage that w the older we get, the more we decline. Yeah, I, that's an interesting perspective, you know, and I, I haven't really noticed the, these, uh, 10 year different pictures that you've been talking about. But one thing I, I do resonate with is on one level, I believe we are, we are the same essence that we were when we were born. But on another level, we do change. And that's not because our essence has changed, but first, probably because we have learned how to um, tap into and, learn and, and connect with our essence and express more of it as we, as we grow, as we become and growing, unfortunately, requires time, so time implies older. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Some people are really good at expressing all of themselves when they're very young. And I really honor those people. I didn't happen to follow that path. I followed a different path that required me to be in great resistance to the truth of who I am for like 40 years before I finally said, okay, enough of that. <laughs> And maybe, maybe you ladies had a similar kind of experience. Uh, that's not true for everybody, but it is true for a lot of people. And, and so 
no matter where you might be right now, you who are watching this, where you might be right now, I guarantee you there are some amazing things you have done in your life. And now is the time to really honor those and, and to bless yourself for what you've done. There's plenty of room for improvement no matter where you are in life. But let's not rush into the improvement thing until we really honor where we are right now. See, I'd like to go back to that word change and that word growth. Yeah, I could turn around and say I've changed. But what I feel I've actually done is grown. And it had mm -hmm. nothing to do with time. It has to do with an awareness of myself, of what's gone on around me, of my story. And I've grown from that. You know, it's a, we say, don't live in the past. I don't. I am very aware of my past. But I'm aware of it for the gifts it has given me. You know, in David, you talked about... Um, the fact that some people are really able to express, express themselves when they're really young. Well, like you, absolutely not, was in people pleaser mode. And so one thing I was not doing was expressing my true self. But I also feel that that happens for a lot of people because something happens when they're young and they're told that it's not okay to be themselves. Those words aren't used, but it's don't do that, that's naughty, behave yourself, whatever. And all children are doing is pushing the boundaries of who they are. And therefore, obviously, the, the, some of the stuff that I help people do is with the younger child, the inner child, that hurt, that trauma, that connecting of the whole self, bringing everything back in so that we can be true to that beautiful essence that was born. Because personally, I believe we were born perfect for this life that we have chosen to have. Whatever that may mean for each individual. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we, we have a mis, I think a misinterpretation of the word perfect. <laughs> you know, uh, Perfection is right here, right now. Um, but in our ego minds, our, our, our mind always finds flaws or errors or uh, things that don't seem right. Or, you know, the, the mind is really good at that. And, and, you know, I hate to tell you this, but it's actually a good thing. It helps to protect us. It can keep us watching for the dangers in our life. And that's important for being safe in this physical world. But it's not the slightest bit important from the spiritual standpoint because your soul is always perfectly safe. And, and so we have, to, you know, we have the dichotomy of the perfect in the spiritual world and the, the perfectionism, if you like, in the physical world. Christy, you look like you're contemplating something there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well... You know, as Sarah said, we can only speak from experience and um, doing that, you know, reconnective work with that divine essence that we came here to be is, is at the root of, of the work that I do and really a huge part of why I am a different person um, now than I was 10 years ago. And I think, you know, most of us, I think probably the three of us are somewhat empathic um, sensitive beings and when you're a sensitive being and you're in an environment that is um, that is with people who ha are even more shut down um, they're not they've learned how not to be sensitive as their survival mechanism um, then you learn to shut down um, and so it's almost like what I was trying to convey initially is where we're in this process of almost unlearning, um, unlearning the filters and the um, boundaries. That's that's kind of what my my whole focus is now is watching 
for ways that I'm being smaller than who I'm here to be. Um, and I think the mind has a tendency for tunnel vision or a bias. And so the conscious self can watch for those biases and start to shift those from, um, from being unconscious to conscious. And also like the other part I, of the, what I was thinking about earlier was if we're gonna have tunnel vision, why not have that tunnel vision be positive instead of negative? I love it. Yeah. So that was kind of jumping all over the place, but that's kind of what. Right. And and actually what you're you're bringing up is this whole notion of, okay, the mind likes to find flaws. That's kind of what it does. But the mind can be trained. And this is something that, you know, we just have to practice, really. Uh, anytime, I mean, I've reached a point now that anytime my, I hear my voice in my head saying, oh, this is bad or this is, this is not good or you're you're doing it wrong or something like that. I kind of pause it for a moment. I say, well, thank you for your perspective. But I'm just curious if you're noticing what's going well. I'm curious if you're noticing what's, you know, what's really positive. And sometimes the mind will, you know, I can, I can actually feel myself, you know, kind of jerking backwards and say, oh, you just slapped me upside the head. Now I'm supposed to pay attention to the positive. Okay. Well, let's see, what can I tell you? And, if you do that enough times, then the focus on the negative starts to diminish. You know, uh, I don't want my ego mind to stop being on the alert for real danger, but I don't want it to be constantly warning me about stuff that really is completely fake, has no relevance whatsoever in my life. So I, that's why I have to keep, you know, going through this process. And I think that anybody can learn to do that. It's just a case of take a pause, look at your thoughts, listen to what you're saying to yourself, and, and ask yourself, is that true? Is there really danger here? Is there really something wrong that absolutely needs to be fixed? You know, is it a life-threatening situation? And of course, if the answer is yes, then maybe you have to deal with that. You know, maybe there is some kind of real danger that you have to have to deal with. But my guess is most of the time you're going to find out, no, it's not really real. It's just my, my mind making up a story based on something that happened years ago in my past. And it's remembering that situation and saying, oh, the circumstances look the same now. So beware, you might have the same situation again. And that's kind of what the ego mind does. So I invite you, just pause, notice. Decide for yourself if there really is a danger. And if there isn't, say, well, thank you for those thoughts. Now I choose to follow this path instead. Can I just um, interject there that that's a good example of what I was saying about watching for boxes and ways that you're living smaller. So if that thought, you know, that um, hypothetical thought that we're talking about or that fear if that's something that habitually shows up that keeps us from expressing ourselves more as love in the world or joy in the world or happiness, then that's what I mean. That, that's keeping you small. It's not, it's not protecting you. It's not, um, it's not helping you grow. It's keeping you stuck. Yeah. Sarah, I just muted you. I'm sorry. I just so you know, I had to mute you because I, I was getting a signal that you're you're that you're producing some static or something on your microphone. So I think you can just unmute yourself now when, when you want to speak and maybe just mute yourself when you're not talking. Um, right. <laughs> sorry about that. No, that, 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 that. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I go into um, I have a gratitude thing that I go through every every day, every morning. And one of the things that I say is, thank you for the love in my heart. 
for a mind and an ego that works with my heart, that supports my heart choices, my gut instincts, inspiration and intuition, that supports me to live my life, to follow my path, to share my gifts, whilst keeping me safe. That's beautiful. And because the mind, the ego, to me, its main role is our safety. And while it keeps us in our comfort zone, within which it is near impossible to grow, <laughs> you know, sort of, it's doing its job. But we are adults. We're not that tiny little baby, that child that's learning, that's going, oh, what's that? Ouch, it's a fire. You know, <laughs> we're all oh, that sharp. We learn, you know, we've learned things like that. We've got that knowledge now that we didn't have. And so now the mind, the ego is no longer the protector of a child. It is more of a supporter. So have we asked it to change its role? Have we been grateful to it for the protection it has given us? Now, absolutely, I've done all this. And every now and again, I go, excuse me, do you mind? <laughs> I've had enough of this. What do you right. think you're playing at? Yeah. But I do, you know, because I absolutely do the gratitude. I absolutely have thanked it. Yeah. I, yeah, I do the same thing. And I think that's a, a beautiful point that you bring up. Uh, and I like the way you phrase that gratitude because you're now reframing the ego mind's purpose at the same time that you're expressing gratitude for it. You're saying, thank you for working in cooperation with my heart and my soul. Now, maybe up, up to now, the ego mind hasn't been doing that. But when you say, thank you for doing that, the ego mind gets the message, oh, that's what you want me to do. And it does seem to start cooperating, especially when you when you put in your uh, statement, while keeping me safe. You're kind of empowering the ego mind then to do the job that it was designed to do, but not to become the commander of the ship and, and take over the entire the journey, you know, because then you end up in chaos. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that. I think another um, another thing that might be helpful for this topic is to realize that, you know, a lot of the New Year's resolutions are about the physical body and judging that the physical body is not either a clothes size that you want or a scale number that you want or whatever. Right. And, you know, this body, you are not the body. You are more than the body. The body is your little spaceship <laughs> you get to live in. <laughs> Without this body, you can't have this physical existence. So start to learn to love your body, whatever shape it is, whatever numbers it has. Um, and perhaps the more you love it, the more you'll take care of it. And the magical things that haven't happened before are going to happen with it. Instead of beating up on it to make it better. That's beautiful too. I, you know, I, and I think it's so important to remember that um, I am not my body. I am the steward, the keeper of this body for some brief period of time. And it really is in the grand scheme of things, a very brief period of time. It's a, it's a pinpoint of light in the entire spectrum of, of all possible frequencies. That's kind of what life is. I mean, well, life is ongoing and forever, but this particular physical existence is just that temporary thing. So if you want to have an enjoyable temporary experience, do everything you can to, um, to love every aspect of this physical experience. And that includes the body. It includes the ego mind. It includes those parts of you that are designed specifically to help you move 
through this period of from birth to what we call birth to death. And of course, your your true essence exists both before and after that forever. But as long as you can keep your sense of love and appreciation and gratitude for the, all of the components and elements that you have here in this physical world, the more you are able to uh, actually live a better life. And simply, as, as you said, Christy, I love this. I'm glad you brought it up. The more I love my body, the more likely I am to take better care of it. You know, and I've, I've shared here and other places that my physical health is not as not where I'd like it to be. And I know that where my physical health is right now is due largely to choices I made back there in the past. Now, I can't undo those choices and I can't change the consequences of those choices. But what I can do is start giving my body more positive uh, experiences and love and make it as good as possible for the situation that I've created. And any one of us can do that. It's really important to love yourself. Loving ourselves isn't something the majority of us have been taught to do, been told it's okay to do, whether it's schooling, whether it's home, whether it's religion, whatever it is that has taught us. So it's the unlearning, as you said, Christy. It is absolutely about unlearning so much. And your story, your story, as I said earlier, is a gift to you. I genuinely believe that I chose the experiences so that I can be here to bring what I bring. Without those experiences, I couldn't do this. I couldn't be here to share from, the, the, from what has happened to me and from my own growth and healing of those hurts and those traumas. Without those in my life and yeah there is you know sort of your past life your history you know isn't who you are it's how you react to it and my initial reaction to that was to feel unwanted unloved not good enough you come up with any negative words you like that's how i felt why i became a people pleaser that was my reaction to what happened the wake-up call, which again was more pain <laughs> than trauma, um, but having understood that it was a wake-up call, having gone through it, and it was, do you know what? That was one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life. It wasn't at the time, but I can look back at it. So if you're going to look back at your life, can you see where the growth has occurred, the changes occurred, if you want to use that word? Find the words that work for you, because different words work for different people. Um, they really do, and I totally get that. I know there are words I don't like people using, because they, they don't have the same meaning for me. But think, think about it. Think about what has happened to you. And the changes, the growth, has eventually brought about. And this is why I said it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a New Year's resolution. Because I was stood in my kitchen, I think, one time after the wake up call. And it was suddenly, why am I worrying about what other people are thinking about me when they're not? They have got so much going on in their own lives but they're not giving me a second thought. And that was that ego mind that had gone into absolute worry and fear of what other people were thinking about me. And it was that opening, that wondrous realization of freedom that they're not. And do you know what, even if they are, it's always that it doesn't matter. It's none of our business what other people think of us because that's their stuff from their experiences. It's not our stuff from our experiences. 
don't judge. And yet it's don't judge until you've walked a mile in my shoes. Don't judge me until you've walked 10 years in my life. <laughs> and my 10 worst years in my <laughs> life. But you still react to me because you are different to me. So it is important that we are true to our own unique being. Great. There's you. a couple things I'd like to share. Um, first of all, David, <laughs> time is not linear. So do not say you cannot change the past. Number one. Well, time is not linear in the true sense of the word. But in our physical experience, it seems linear, at least as far as the as far as the way our, our lives seem to go. But right. in the spiritual sense, I totally agree with you. And in terms of healing, we can heal things we've done in the past. So absolutely don't close that door. Yeah. Um, the second thing I wanted to make as a kind of observation slash comment <laughs> is um, the notion or phrase or edict, whatever you want to call it, that I don't know if either of you heard or any of our viewers heard of don't be don't be full of yourself. Don't be so full of yourself. And I want you to really think about that and damn it, be full of yourself. That's who you're here to be. Right. And um, watch for ways that you're um, you're afraid to be out there, if you will, to be, you know, that that spark of, of who you are. Um, because it really doesn't serve anybody if you're dumbing that down for everybody else. Because as Sarah said, you know, so many people worry about what other people are thinking about them, but they're just worrying about what other people are thinking about them. <laughs> they're not worrying about you. So just just do you. That's right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I like that. I did hear that. Uh, you're so full of yourself or something. And I remember when I was a kid and I heard that and I said, well, what else would I be full of? You know, that was kind of what came up in my mind. Uh, and yeah, I, I understand that it's a way of, it's a way for other people to deal with their own discomfort in the fact that you are showing up so full. And their discomfort is not actually your problem. It's not your fault either. So when you diminish yourself in order to try and reduce their discomfort, guess what? All you're really doing is diminishing yourself because they're still going to be uncomfortable. They haven't changed anything. You have tried to change something. And furthermore, when you diminish yourself, you are actually depriving the whole universe of your essence. You're depriving the world of your brilliance. So if someone says you're so full of yourself, say, thank you. That seems like the right answer to me. <laughs> uh, I wanted to also address something that you said, Sarah. I'm talk talking about wake-up calls. Uh, you know, you mentioned that the wake-up call was kind of painful, and I, I've experienced that myself, you know, where something happens in my life that finally I see it as a wake-up call. But my truth is, when I look back in the past, I can see earlier times before that so-called wake-up call, when the universe was delivering gentler messages to me that I wasn't paying attention to. So that's what the universe seems to do. If, you know, if I have come into this, this life with a particular purpose, and if I'm not following that purpose, the universe is going to do things to kind of knock me back on track. You know, it'll, first of all, it'll be kind of little encouragements, little nudges. But if I'm paying no attention to that and I'm pursuing other things that are contrary to my purpose, sooner or later, those little nudges are going to start to become kicks in the ass and eventually a whack across the side of the head or a, a car crash into a bunch of trees. You know, something like that is going to happen because you haven't been paying attention. So the question is, are you able 
to acknowledge that everything is happening in your life is happening for a reason that you have in some way attracted it in order to help you move in the direction of your purpose. Are you able and willing to look at that and accept that as a possibility? Something to think about. I think that's um, in, in some ways that to me speaks of faith and trusting that all is well and all is happening in align in alignment with our highest good and we we haven't been taught to um be in that space of faith i think in fact if anything in the last 50 years we've been carried further and further away from that um, yeah. which, which kind of brings me back to a point that Sarah was making about, you know, people judging you. And I think one of the ways that I have, there's, I could talk like for an hour about that whole concept, but <clears throat> really, as Sarah said, the nutshell is, you know, what other people think about you is based on what their wounds are because they're seeing themselves in us, but not able to acknowledge that. But for me i know that source god all that is knows exactly who i am what my intentions are how i'm acting so what other humans see through their filters ultimately that i came from knows exactly who i am yeah exactly right sarah it looked like you were about to say something you're muted Oh, Christy froze on me for a minute, <laughs> for a second. <laughs> I just had a note that um, that I lost my connection for a second. So um, I just want to say, you know, to re restate that last sentence that if there is a judge of me and I don't think there is, oops, I'm gone. You're here. No, you're here. You oh, you. I'm here. I'm here, but I'm not visible. That's right. You can just bring your camera back on when you get a chance. Okay. Um, if there is a judge of me, and I don't really think there is, but um, the love and light that is at my source, that is at your source, um, knows exactly who I am and knows that I'm here acting to the best of my human ability in and as love. And that is my focus, is be showing up as light and love. Now, do I do it 100%? Probably not, but I'm trying. Beautiful. Go ahead, Sarah. Well, I, I just feel that, that a lot of us are trying <laughs> in our own unique way. <laughs> Some of us are very trying. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is all down to words and terminology and people's different understanding. But I knew exactly what you meant, Christy. Sorry. And, and I do feel that life is for living and it is important to have a sense of humor mm -hmm. you know as conversations with god in the conversations with god books and it was just like and it was well who do you think created the sense of humor god did you know it's not humankind that created it, it and it is important because it is it is a lightness it can bring us a sense of relaxation it can bring a sense of relief laughter fun enjoyment happiness but it all comes from inside of us right it does feel you know, okay it was a comment you made but actually the feeling within that comment came from inside of me it didn't come from outside of me and i so like what you wrote there christy in joy meant i like that I hadn't thought of it that way before. Very good. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And so, so it is important to be it, to be really happy, to allow yourself to find the joy in things. And there are days when it isn't easy. It really isn't. Even for people who have been doing this for quite a number of years, and there are people who've been doing it for longer than I've been doing it, and it's over 20 years now. You know, 
they we still have we're here to have a human experience mm -hmm. be gentle with yourself but i would like to go back to a comment that sir david about said about being full of yourself and being who you are and being true to you and a number of years ago i used to do a lot of fairs and events and different things sharing the techniques and practices and a group of us would do them and it was a local one it was a um to do the carnival or something and so it was an outdoor one summer months and this lady came and talked to me and i was just very open and honest with her and i'd actually had my friend trevor turn around to me at one stage sometimes he listens he's there and he listens and he says, you can't talk to people like that and i said yes i can <laughs> um, <laughs> and she rang me um and she said to me i was so cross with you oops <laughs> okay what's coming next and she said well, i thought about it i thought about what you said and she said you're the only person who's been honest with me thank you but i also think very much think about if we are not open and honest with people and it may not be easy for them to hear, as it wasn't for her, but she did open herself to it beautifully. Um, and it's very, I, and I feel if somebody turns around in a week, a month, a year, 10 years, and says, that funny woman that day at that fair said that to me. If I hadn't, whether I'm the first, the second, or the third, but we understand that if something comes at you, three times it's because it's something you're meant to listen to so if we hold back now it doesn't mean we don't try and say things as kindly as possible but do you know sometimes we do have to be a bit bull in the china shop and being a torian i can definitely do that <laughs> trust yourself Trust right. your knowing. There are times when I really do, I think, okay, I know I've just put something in that email that is quite blunt. <laughs> Should I tone it down? And I will take my nursing pendulum and I will ask. And if I get told yes to tone it down, I'll do it. If I'm told no, I'll leave it. <laughs> because you never know what you are here to say to somebody that supports them in the unique way that is right from you for them. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and I think it's an important thing to remember. And by the way, I, I don't, just because you decide to say something in a diplomatic way, doesn't mean you have to diminish yourself to do that. You know, toning things down doesn't necessarily mean hiding, you know, and disappearing. In fact, it doesn't mean that at all. It just means when someone says tone it down, what I'm hearing is I'm having a hard time hearing what you have to say because, you know, it's coming at me pretty hard right now. I, I'm feeling a, a lot of strong energy coming at me. That's what they're actually trying to tell you, even though they don't say it that way. So they're saying, please don't yell at me, you know, or whatever it is they say, you know. <clears throat> and this is something, if, if we could learn to communicate properly, that's what we would do. I, I might say to you, uh, Sarah, thank you so much for what you're saying, but I noticed that I'm having some resistance. I am having some resistance to what you're saying. It's, it's just not landing on me right now. This is not a good time for me. Whatever the story might be, that is about me. It has nothing to do with you. So I don't want you to tone it down. I'm just telling you that I'm not able to hear you right now. That's a difference. Now, if people could learn to communicate that way, man, can you imagine the way the world would change immediately? But right now, we are so busy blaming the other person for what we feel 
and for what we think, it, we're turning this place into a into a little living hell for all of us. So I'm 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 speaking in generalities. I know that I contribute to that myself in some way, and I I judge that other people contribute to it as well. If we could all raise our awareness and our consciousness about this, then we could learn to communicate in a more compassionate and loving way with each other and take full ownership of what's going on for ourselves. I think that we would, we would witness the creation of wonderful lives everywhere. One of the things we had on our list to talk about was this notion of reflection versus resolution. And I want to make sure that we get to that. Um, we were kind of started, we started off talking about how we arrive into a year looking at making new resolutions and all this. And we covered a lot of re really, really good ground since we started. But I'd like to kind of get to this notion of reflection versus resolution. So who of you would like to start on that topic? It's more about reflection than resolution. Personally, for me, it's okay, look back at my year and how well have I done? Where was I at the beginning to where I was at the end? And it's about, for me, it's about brilliant, congratulations. I don't need to do it for a year, I do it on a morning, I do it on the daytime. It's a wow. You've achieved so much this morning. And when I go to bed at night, do you know what? I'm really proud of you today. It doesn't matter if, you know, as I've seen these quotes, it doesn't matter if all you've done is be able to get out of bed. Because trust me, when I came, I, although they never diagnosed me with ME, because it wasn't for long enough, if you have ever been in that situation of getting out of bed, is so exhausting that you have got to sit down and take a break before you can go and have a shower. You have to take a break. And seriously, and I spent two months off work because if I didn't sit down, I would fall down. That was the sense, that was the feeling I had. And if you've gone through something like that, it's, do you know what? I got through the day. I, goodness, that period of time, I got through so many jigsaw puzzles, thousand piece jigsaw puzzles, because they, but they kept me going. They gave me some concentration, but I wouldn't even let myself drive my car, but that was also made it really difficult because I couldn't even go for my walks out on the local Heathland. Because I remember going out one day and thinking, I don't know whether I can keep putting one foot in front of the other. But there was nowhere to sit other than on the ground. And I'm not very good with creepy crawlies, so sitting on the ground wasn't <laughs> good to me either. Um, and I had to get myself home. But it made me so scared to go and try it again for months. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. And each of us has gone through stuff. We're not saying you have to achieve mega amounts in a morning, in an afternoon, in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year. If you got through the year, and we've gone through some tough times, you know, with COVID, with the variants, with whatever. And some people, some people have really struggled with it. Some people have really thrived with it, but some people have really struggled with it. Be proud of the fact you're coming through it. What have you got through? So reflect on your achievements. They may not appear achievements to other people, but they are achievements to you. And if they've gone on and said, it does not matter what other people think or judge you on. What you are feeling and thinking about yourself. Don't knock yourself. Because the more you praise yourself, the 
more the mind than the ego will be into working with you. Think about, I haven't thought about that all for ages. Um, but think about it. You are so much better than you give yourself credit for. Do you need to really make any resolutions? Or is it just important? to improve on the view of yesterday. I like that. That was, that's really awesome, Sarah. Um, and I think that's really what we've been talking about this whole episode is, you know, learning to love ourselves, learning to appreciate who we are and how we show up in this moment without so much judgment about maybe what didn't go right or what, you know, what could have been better or any other stories that we make up about it. You know, I think some of us, some people, uh, well, not me personally, but some people are still working in jobs where on a day to day basis, they're expected to accomplish a certain amount of stuff. And, you know, so that they may have to deal with that kind of thing in a different way than, than you and I. But even if that's true, they can still have a positive, loving appreciation for who they are, regardless of what they do or how many tasks they get done in a day. You know, in the end, can you come away from, from your day and say, I really love myself? Can you do that? And if you can't, well, then I would say that is a place for you to focus some attention on. Because if you are not really able to authentically and legitimately and with full integrity, love yourself, all of yourself, every single aspect, without condition, then, there, then there's a work for you to do there. And that work is far more important than getting a certain number of things on your checklist. Um, even if it, you know, it, it, it's even more important, I think, than satisfying your boss. And here's another thing that you may not be thinking about, but which I believe is true. The moment you really can authentically and, and with integrity, love yourself completely and totally, your whole approach to your job is going to change. Because you're going to start seeing this job as a some kind of a vehicle for you to express yourself more fully. And maybe you're expressing all that you possibly can of yourself right now in this job. And maybe the job has completed his, its purpose. Maybe you'll discover that it's time to find some other work that allows you to expand even further into the fullness of who you are. This is the beauty of reflection. You know, Christy, go ahead. And reflection, really, when you think about it, it it's it it sounds or it's the same thing a mirror does, right? So, if you you know, as you look at your as you look at yourself in the mirror, there are things you you know probably see that you don't like, but look away from those things and look at the things you do like and realize that as you do gain more self-love, you start um, and demanding is not quite the right word, but you start demanding that others around you act more lovingly toward you. Um, in, in the workplace, maybe you don't allow someone to treat you badly as they have in the past because you know they're the boss and that's just the way it is so self-love is it's it's at that it's at the core of that reflectiveness so when you don't love yourself the mirror never shows you who you are <laughs> um that's so great. yes and I, I just want to comment on on something you said there which i think is really important now, you didn't say it this way, but this is how I'm going to paraphrase it. The people will treat you no better than you treat yourself. 
we teach people how to treat us. That's another way of putting it, yes. And, and I have got to go because of my own life program coming up shortly. It's been a real pleasure. I hope you'll carry on without me. Thank you, folks, and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye, Sarah. Thank you. Bye. So, yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing that, that you just said, Christy, and a very important one, that if we, if we love ourselves, then we effectively teach other people how we expect to be treated. And uh, yeah, that's so important. I'm sure, I'm sure glad you brought that up. That's a really good one. And the idea and of reflection from a mirror as well as just our own internal reflection right. of, of what's going on. Yeah. And really like what's showing up for us in our lives is really a reflection of where we are internally. So, right. you know, if, if, we're, if we're not happy, then it's going to vibrate out. So the more we can, again, go to that space of being in our, in our zone, um, the more we're changing the world as and through ourselves, win-win. Right. And I think that what we're really leading to here is learning. We've talked a little bit about gratitude uh, in this program, but another aspect, which I think is extremely important, is the, is the notion of appreciation. So first of all, having gratitude for everything that's in our life, appreciating ourselves for how we show up, and then expressing that same appreciation for all the people in our lives and circumstances that have helped us to get to where we are now. If we can learn to do that on a regular basis, simply expressing appreciation on a regular basis can really amplify our lives in a, ma in a magical way. Right. And the things that we may judge as um, challenges or um, negativity may be the place where our greatest opportunities are. So this is right. the importance of being aware. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful point too. I mean, how many of us are where we are today because of a painful or, or challenging situation that happened yesterday or the week before or whatever? You know, we wouldn't be here now without that experience. So can we learn to appreciate even the things that seem to be unpleasant or painful or even traumatic? If we can, what happens is we start to really grow and, and expand and, and develop even more. And we start to express ourselves. And, and, and to use your phrase from before, we get to be more full of ourselves. It's interesting, too, what's coming to me, David, while you're saying that is, um, you know, that phrase hindsight is twenty twenty, And usually we, you know, like you're saying, and I think Sarah said it earlier, we can look back on these things and say, oh, my gosh, it was terrible at the time, but it was like one of the best things to happen to me. So if we can only jump into that attitude more quickly when things seemingly go wrong, you know, that's the faith jump to say, okay, I don't, I don't get this right now, but somehow this is, this is for me. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine if, if, if we could just say, okay, I don't know what this is for, but I appreciate you because I know that you're here to do something good for me. I just don't know what that is yet. Yeah. That's, that's a, a great reminder. Well, so it's been almost an hour here, and I just want to find an, a, a gentle way of, of closing out the show. Christy, do you have anything, uh, any final words that you'd like to share before we close out today? Um, just to know that even sometimes when the humans in our lives are not there, seemingly there for us or acting loving, that there's so much love that enfolds us in um, the unseen beings that surround us, angels, guardians, ancestors, whatever, you know, whatever you want to label those. I just say, you know, love and light. And I am like thrilled, I guess would be the word that spirit shows me little hearts um, almost not every day, but at least once a week. For example, I was walking the other day and 
the streets had been salted and there was a little nugget of ice uh, of um, salt in a heart shape. So just be aware of the love that's showing up for you. It's there. Yeah, that's that's nice. It's a great reminder. Love is everywhere. Love is everywhere when we look for it. And, um, you know, sure, we can look for all the dark stuff if we want to. And we can look for all the light stuff if we want to. It's a, It's really a choice. So my suggestion is choose the light stuff as a as a target of your vision so that you can have a wonderful life so that your life will be wonderful it likely already is you just have to turn toward it <laughs> exactly. all right well thank you sarah and uh christy for being here today we're going i'm going to terminate the call now i'm just going to say thank you all for joining us the recording of this will be on my website at yourlifemasterycoach.com and uh, live a full and wonderful life.